It's been 65 years since combat ended in the Korean War, but this week brought new hope to the more than 7,000 families still seeking closure with their lost loved ones. 55 cases containing remains of U.S. service members lost during the war were transferred back to U.S. custody Friday after President Trump negotiated their return during his summit with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. Forensic scientists in Hawaii will now begin the process of identifying those lost heroes. I just returned from the facility where that kind of painstaking work has been going on for years. Were these the standard eyeglasses at the I time? I think were issue were eyeglasses. Issue eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. eyeglasses, a battered wallet, a St. Christopher medal for protection, a haunting reminder of those Americans lost nearly 70 years ago on the Korean Peninsula. Americans kind of who up, Dr. Up John Byrd has spent here. decades trying to identify. When I was working at Unsan, uh, one of the, the locations where we had a large battle, I was in the base camp on the hillside overlooking the field where the battle took place. Uh, and I was in my tent uh, with a warm sleeping bag I was thinking about those men who spent several days down in that field just down below me, same time of year, and they didn't have a warm sleeping bag. And it's very, uh, very sobering Gotta when you haunted. think about what they went through. Bird, a forensic anthropologist who works here at the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency in Honolulu, retrieved those remains more than a decade ago. Amazing to remember that these were all worn by our service members. Despite the sterility in this lab, it is powerfully moving. But what we can't show you on camera is even more profound. Within reach of my fingertips, the skeletal remains, teeth, skulls, bits of hair of those courageous Americans who fought in Korea, matched through DNA or even old x-rays. We have to take it as a giant three-dimensional puzzle. We're getting close to have identified 500 now. Uh, we're doing very well, but uh, we've got a long ways to go. It is sobering but rewarding work. When you have family members and they talk to us about what it meant to them when we were able to succeed in making an ID, it, it's an extremely rewarding feeling in a, in a way that you don't get in science very often. When Dr. Bird and the others are able to identify a service member, the family will come to this room, just yards from the lab. Admiral John Kreitz, the deputy director here, says it was designed as a sacred space where families can connect with their long lost loved ones, sometimes for the first time. It had a family in here, a, a widow of a Vietnam War uh, soldier and a daughter. They were spending some time in the viewing room and uh, the daughter said, we're doing great, but we need some more time because this is the first time I've ever met my father. You know, he went off to war six months before she was born, and it was the first time she'd ever seen her dad. And you go, like, giving her that closure was so special. A feeling for which Diana Brown San Filippo is still waiting. She was just four when her father, a pilot, was sent to Korea. My dear little Diana, hi, Pugnose. Say, what's this I hear about you finding a snake? Months later, on a reconnaissance mission, his plane was shot down. Today, the thought that one of those cases just brought out of North Korea could contain her father's remains chokes her up. Takes my breath away to think about it. Diana has tried to stay connected to her father all these years, becoming a pilot herself even getting the chance to fly the same kind of plane, a P-51 Mustang, in which her father was lost. Flying that aircraft that he, the same aircraft that he flew, gave me the ultimate connection to him. Um, it makes me emotional just thinking about it. Diana guards her heart until the remains are identified, but there is always hope for her and for thousands of families still waiting. And we hope they all get resolution. That's all for us today. Thanks for sharing part of your Sunday with us. Check out World News tonight and have a great day.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.